Enjoy the innovation showcases. We'll see you on the other side. Now, welcome to our first session in the Innovation Showcase. Here to talk about intelligent mass scale networking for secure critical infrastructure is Senior Vice President and General Manager of Service Provider Business, Yvette Knuff. Thanks. It's great to be here today with all of you to talk a little bit about critical infrastructure. And what I like about this particular session is that every time we've talked about critical infrastructure, carrier class, the topic's always been about really large refrigerator sized boxes to, to, to deal with service provider level traffic. And I think what's really changed in the last years is as we go through these big architectural shifts, what we're finding is that critical infrastructure really applies all the way through enterprise, public sector, through service provider, because our networks are changing to go from really large networks to really small to really distributed networks, et cetera. So what I want to talk about a little bit today is about how it is that critical infrastructure is changing across all of the different ecosystems. So you saw these five pillars this morning when Chuck talked about the five big pillars that Cisco's focused on. And I would say that there's never been a time when service providers' key pillars and what we're focused on are so aligned with what it is that Cisco's pillars are, are, are focused on. And I'll say again, across service provider, across enterprise, across public sector, I want to talk about how it is that reinventing the network, which is what we're here to talk about, doesn't just talk about networking, but it talks about how it is that we're distri distributing multi-cloud architectures, how it is that we're using data and telemetry in new ways, security, everything that's on the five pillars of Cisco is, is affected by the network transformations that are happening with 5G and some of the things we'll talk about here today. So another picture that Chuck showed this morning, I kind of like this picture, the, what did he call it, the good old days. It's maybe, let's call it the oversimplification of what it used to be like to run you know, an enterprise network connecting uh, branches and campuses and, and, and kind of a, um, a simplistic view. And the point that Chuck was making this morning is that, is that our connections of what it used to be like to connect branch and campus used to be connecting multiple locations that we controlled. And then he made the point that it's not about what we control, it's about all of the different cloud infrastructures and public cloud and connections that are no longer controlled by us. And what is it we're doing about that? But what I'd like to talk about is another impact of change as to what's happening with data traffic in general. So I have this slide and I want to just walk through for a moment each of the four quadrants and we'll start with the top left here. And if you look at this top left, what we're seeing is that our data continues to grow at a growth rate of about 50% every year, 50% growth and it's just not stopping. We've seen that historically, we continue to see it. Mobile traffic especially is represented by this 50% growth. And what that means is that instead of it being that we have these fixed line networks that we've been managing for years, we're moving to that, to mobile broadband. People are talking about, I want one gig services on a mobile broadband as opposed to having to have fixed line. SD-WAN, it's no longer about SD-WAN and managing even over the top versus MPLS. SD-WAN is all about, I want to have 5G and over the top and I want to have MPLS as my options. So the concept of mobility traffic is, is continuing to find its way into our network infrastructures. If we move to the, to the top right of this slide, what you see is that it's not just traffic that's increasing, it's also shaping itself differently. So traffic is moving more and more to the edge, more and more close to the user. What we're seeing is shrinking numbers in, intermetro, is in, in metro to metro, and we're seeing that the, that the numbers are increasing at the edge. So what does that mean for us? It means all of us have to boost our infrastructure at the edge. We can talk about fog computing, we can talk about data centers deep. So as much as we talk about the interesting thing 
happening like this morning with Kubernetes and Google Cloud and what we can do between hybrid clouds of public and our clouds, it's now that those clouds are moving deeper and deeper into the network. So we have cloud infrastructures all the way close to the subscriber to manage all the way up to a public cloud. So seamless mobility, and as we look to the bottom, to the bottom left here, and what it is that's happening with 5G and, and, and mobile services, it's all about creating this seamless mobility. What goes over landline, what goes over, what goes over 5G, and how is it, how is it that we make that experience seamless for either our, our internal connections, our what used to be branch and campus, our service provider customers, whatever it might be. And then most important, and not to be forgotten, and it's something that we'll talk about all throughout Cisco Live and all products, is automation. Automation is the one thing that ties everything together we're doing. Our networks are getting so complex and so difficult that we cannot forget how it is that we have to simplify their operation and the impact that it has on how it is that our networks run, self-heal, and, um, and self-manage. So, if I kind of go back to that simple picture and say, okay, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, uh, you know, the oversimplified picture from this morning saying, you know, it's about connecting multiple locations. It's now about enterprises, public sector, service provider, anybody that's saying, I'm large enough to manage my own critical infrastructure. It's about how is it that I can create high speed and a fiber optimized data center interconnect? How is it that I can create my own peering infrastructure? What solutions does Cisco have for that? So I used to think an enterprise solution ends at an ASR 1K, let's just say. And so now we go way past the ASR 1K in terms of what a large enterprise, what a service provider can offer to a large enterprise and what we can do for public sector. So I'll give you an example, and, um, and the example I have is, uh, is Deutsche Bahn. And uh, I'll ask, is the Deutsche Bahn representatives here? Do I see them? My German colleagues, the German Railway, wonderful group of people, and they're really doing interesting things to innovate. So what the German Railway is doing is they're taking everything that you see on the left. So if you look at this slide, it's very familiar to us, right? Offering LAN, Wi-Fi, all the common components that you would see in the gray area as an enterprise. Then they go to the ASR 1K and everything that you see on the blue side of this slide really is going beyond what it is that would usually, that's where you'd usually hand off to a service provider. And so what Deutsche Bahn is doing is saying, I'm leveraging all of these NCS 5500s from Cisco. I'm going to leverage things like segment routing in order to create optimized data paths, and I'm going to have the transparency and the visibility into the network, not just in the gray area, but I want that visibility end to end all the way to my peering points. And they'll offer their own peering points to their Googles, et cetera. So the point here is, is, that, is that we've gotten to a point where critical infrastructure is no longer something that's a handoff point. Critical infrastructure is something that we really have a massive amount of solutions for beyond an ASR 1K. So a couple of ideas as to technologies that really look at leveraging this critical infrastructure, leveraging this large scale, is um, I'll tell you many discussions that I have, uh, especially with, 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 uh, with, with customers that are either offering services to, to, to enterprises or enterprises themselves is about, I lose my visibility, I've spent so much time trying to find visibility into my network, and then I lose it when it goes off as a handoff to a service provider. So as a service provider, how is it that we can offer that visibility to our customers, or as a customer, how is it that I can extend my visibility to what it is that goes beyond the network that I directly control? So a lot of things for that, the programmability, what we're doing across all of our XR-based platforms, the visibility across all of that, and the network control. So we've spent a huge amount of time really building this carrier class operating system called XR. I'll talk about it a little bit more uh, later. But the key is that you have 
not just carrier class boxes, but you have a carrier class system across all of your network. You don't just have visibility and programmability into a box, you have it on a system level across all of your network. So looking at some of the things on this slide about, you know, from long haul, from system level, modular architectures that are put together dynamically into systems, the whole idea is optimization goes, goes across all of that. And what I'll say is that this also goes into the control layer. And one of the questions I get a lot, and I put this in specifically for Cisco Live because it's one of the biggest questions I get, is what is the difference between the automation that you're doing on the service provider side called Crosswork, and what's the difference between that and DNAC? And so if you look at, so I put together this oversimplified slide, right? But if you look at DNA Center, you look at that, that's really a software-defined access platform does amazing things, right? It has controllers, it has API uh, exposure, a lot of really, really critical things to run your enterprise architecture. If we then turn around and look at the service provider side, the service provider side has a very different function. On the service provider side, we talk about how it is that we can minimize the number of hops in a network. How is it that we can decrease the number of layers inside your network? How is it that we can overlay automation across optical transport as well as routing? So traffic optimization and traffic minimization, big, big focus of what it is that we automate on the service provider side. So the other thing that we do is we look at health. We look at programmability and APIs. So those things I'd say we have in common. So one of the things that, uh, that we're announcing here at Cisco Live is that for those critical infrastructures that cross both the enterprise and the service provider side, across all of those, we will share the APIs and we will share the telemetry so that you can have a common visualization across both of those. So for those, DNA Center will be able to be both on the, on the uh, uh, XR-based side as well as on the software-defined access side. And then for the mass scale automation of what it is that we do for service providers, which I'll talk about in just a minute, that continues to be cross work. So there is, there is um, some, some of the visibility and API side that overlaps, which we'll leverage and make sure is available there um, on DNAC. So let me shift a little bit. Um, so we just talked about what it is that is, um, what it is that, that kind of crosses public sector and enterprise when it comes to carrier class and, and service provider level products. When I talk about the product side, I'll talk about how small those form factors go to really put some meat behind that so that you can see that we really have some great products that, can, that, will, that, will, that will meet so many different size and form factor needs. But let me just talk a little bit about pure SP. And as much as the five pillars were Cisco's pillars that Chuck talked about, let me talk about the five pillars that we wake up every day thinking about in the service provider side. And that's 5G automation, cloud, the explosion of bandwidth, and what we're doing for revenue growth with things like B2B and machine to machine. So, so uh, I want to just spend a moment on all of these because they're so important. And, and I want to talk a little bit talking about the security layer that goes all the way across and what I mean by that. So, so with that, I'll just jump right into the 5G discussion. <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, you know, what's Cisco doing for 5G? You're not a radio provider, so you're not enabling spectrum. So what I'd like to say, 5G is a huge amount more than we're all gonna get a new phone and have one gig services on our phone, right? It's not, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more than that. And if you look at this top layer here, you'll see what it is at a high level where we play in 5G. And it's interesting because it almost reads again like Cisco's five pillars, right? It goes across, it goes across uh, multi-cloud, we're in the IP core, Core, we're in the 5G core, we're in the access layer, and of course we build the clients that end up using 5G. So Cisco's in this unique position with this 5G transition that it's never mattered so much for a company to have such breadth. We offer the enterprise services, we offer the network, we do the mobility packet core, so how is it that we bring all of that together? If you look at the bottom side of this slide, you'll see a whole bunch of services. So let's take, for example, network slicing. So if you're, let's say, a car company and you want to have, I want to have 
tens of slices every day. I want them to be turned up. I want them to be turned down. I want to have the life cycle of those managed. I want to be having to have network slices on demand. Secure my own guaranteed SLA-based uh, uh, network slices. So you can say, I have a router and it does network slicing. You can also say, I have a service and it supports network slicing. So what we're working on to enable that type of network as a service and that type of slices on demand is we support slices all the way through all of our IP products, all the way from core to, to, to edge. We support it throughout all of our packet core and management products. We support the enablement. You might have seen the announcement of MSX um, and how it is that we do service enablement. So we do the configuration management through our network orchestration product called NSO a complete end-to-end -end of how it is that we're managing 5G service enablement is what it is that we're working on. It's really much, much of, of, of a step deeper than certainly offering just the 5G spectrum, but also just offering a component in 5G. So much more to come from us. You know, you can see it in some of our demos, and, and certainly we're happy to have a discussion as to how 5G for us means the entire service enablement end-to-end. Let's talk about that second pillar, which is automation. And I have some numbers that I've put up here, and they're, 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 they're super impressive, right? You can see that if you launch an automation product with us and you look at what we're doing with NSO, um, again, our service orchestration, automa automatically looking at configurations, over 50% of errors are made on mass scale networks by just somebody fat fingering a configuration, right? By us just creating consistency of configurations, management of systems, upgrades, Chuck talked this morning about 60,000 upgrades in one night. If you can just even picture having 60,000 pieces of equipment to upgrade one night. We've done that with our network automation and cross work. So what I'll ask you to do is don't look at the numbers on here. Think about the customer satisfaction. We can make more money on the bottom line of a company today with churn reduction, with keeping your customers more than getting new customers. So it's all about keeping our customers happy, and that's just as important as it is trying to go out and try to sell products to get new customers. And automation is a huge part of that. It's not just cost savings, wow, I can do more with less people. It's about I can create service velocity, I can launch services faster, and I can keep my customers happier. So I want to just talk about these four things just to talk a little bit about routing. On the mass scale side, on the, in the blue box here, what it is that we're doing is, is incredible. Innovating in power, cooling, uh, uh, throughput and density, uh, massive, amount of, uh, massive amount of innovation. If we look at the NCS 5500, 3.6 terabits per rack unit and, uh, and continuing to increase and focus on massive throughput uh, on the routing side. We have the highest density and the lowest uh, power core and aggregation. If you look at the NCS 500, which is XR-based XR access platform, we announced that a couple of months ago in order to help with this entire segmentation of creating, creating XR across your system so you can do things like efficient segment routing. Um, you might have seen the announcement recently of the NCS 1K. Uh, which is a really high bandwidth optical transport, 4.8 terabits per second in 2RU and 76.8 terabits per second in a, in a fiber pair. So um, continuing ongoing innovation, but look at the form factors of this, 1RU, 2RU, really, really downscaled in size all the way to being able to build modular architectures to really big size. So, so really, really uh, uh, important to reemphasize that it can go to small scalability as well as up to large. Automation continues to be really important for traffic and insights. I want to also talk about always on. The way that we look at our networks is our networks run a 911 system, right? If our networks break and 911 doesn't work, the ambulances can't drive to the people to the hospital. That's the way we look at always on. So keep in mind that carrier class XR-based operating system, if you can utilize that, again, past the 1K, or for critical infrastructure, very, very important. 
And again, security trusted, very deep and very wide, which I'll talk about again in just a minute. Again, XR is something that deserves just a minute on it by itself. If you look at how it is that you can manage multi-layer control of a network, it's easy to say, I'm selling you a box and I'm controlling and giving you control of that box. We've had that for many years. It's much more difficult to say, I have now a system and I'm giving you that level of control of a system. What we're doing with X XR gives you that programmability and insight across multiple systems, including the optical layer and the routing layer. So some really, really special things that we're doing with XR. High density, carrier class, programmable, automated, and supports some of the most, uh, some of the most innovative features of where we're going. So to just to kind of sum it up for where it is that we've been with routing, this traffic growth, 50% every single year, we've had to continue to innovate on both ASICs and, the, and on the system level. And you look at where it is that we've launched with our 9K solution, our 6K solution, our 5500, we continue to stay ahead of that curve with all of our innovations. If you think about it, if traffic's growing 50% a year, are you planning for 50% more power every year? 50% more resources to manage your system? 50% more space in, in, in your facilities? You can't do it. You have to count on Cisco to continue to create 50% better density every year. And as you can see, we continue to do that. And the only thing I'll say, we continue to be very devoted to both merchant and custom silicon. And as Chuck talked about today, our investment in LIBA and what you'll see continuing to come from us on both the merchant and the custom side is, uh, is, is, uh, is really, really exciting. So, so much more to come on that. I'll just want to touch on fabric architecture is something that you can talk to us as you come visit us in our, in, our, um, in, our, in our booth or some of our demos here. Really exciting things that are happening about new levels of scale. If you look at cost effective traffic growth and you look at how it is that we're creating new traffic patterns, again, I talked about big traffic pattern changes with these architectural shifts. We can create small blast radiuses, we can self-adjust traffic, and instead of doing that in a hardware base, we do that in a software base. So physically nothing changes, but the software optimizes how it is that we grow. So please come talk to us a little bit more about that. So moving to the optical side, and just looking at where it is that we are with data center interconnect, some really great things happening. I talked about this lowest form factor. I'll give you a little bit of data. ACG Research just listed Cisco as number one in the Metro DCI market and number two in small form factor DCI. So within two RU, a, a two RU platform, as I said earlier, we can squeeze 4.8 terabits per second and then we can have that go through, a, through a, a, um, at, at over 76 terabits per second over fiber. So if you're really thinking about owning your own DWDM, owning your own data center interconnect, please come talk to us and we can certainly have some solutions for you there that are, uh, that are, that are world class and we continue to innovate and announce new things on that side. So a lot of customers of ours, large banking customers, large transport customers, service providers customers are saying, look, I really want to light up my own fiber and I want to do my own uh, uh, long haul data center interconnect and, uh, and we have some really great solutions for that. I'll just touch on cable really quick as well. Um, for those of you that are in the cable side, we spent a lot of time talking about 5G. You know, 5G, new spectrum, new things, new architectures. But I look at 5G and that word is an excuse. What's really happening is the traffic shifts we talked about at the beginning. And we have to look at how is it that we're building networks in a different way how is it with, that we're making them more flexible? And how is it that we're moving things like compute closer to customers and changing our networks dynamically through things like automation in order to be ready for 5G? And on a cable infrastructure, it's very similar. We've led this disaggregation of everything that used to be this big box called a CCAP CMTS. And so we started with really contributing to DOCSIS 3.1. 
We've been leading full duplex as to where, how is it that we're going to get five gigabits per second upstream to, 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 uh, to, every, to every household. And then looking at, 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 at RemoteFi, which is one of the things that I'm the most excited about. Because RemoteFi takes the IP network and moves the IP network deep into the network. And, and, uh, and it's exciting to me, you know, I drive home and I see all the telephone poles and I see the boxes there and I think, you know, there's a node, there's a node. IP is going to be all the way to that or to that little thing that you trip over every time you try to mow your yard, right? You know, that little green box. So, so the fact that we're bringing IP that deep into the network for an entire transport infrastructure is, uh, is, 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 is a really, really cool time in technology that we're making that big of a shift. And, um, and so again, 5G, uh, 5G now, cable infrastructure with this aggregation, remote fi and virtualization. Everything's moving into the cloud. Some of those clouds will be very deep into the network and some of that virtualization will sit very high so that we can always optimize how it is that that traffic needs to go for be it machine to machine or whatever it is that we have to use it for. So if I kind of look at it in summary, and I, and I look at uh, uh, what it is we're doing, 5G, routing, optical, small form factor, large form factor, ASICs, custom, or, 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 uh, or merchant. It's all about kind of this circle, right? We will continue to innovate with the most high performance and optimized silicon. We build systems that, that continue to push the needle on where it is you have to go with density and where it is you have to go with space and where it is you have to go with power because we're not going to grow the entire ecosystem at 50% a year. Automation is key to all of that because it has to run in a whole different way. So please come look at our crosswork platform and what it is we're doing there. And everything is about these, these systems and architectures. It's about these shifts that are happening. Data is moving closer to the subscriber. We have to have super low latency services. And that means we have to build our infrastructures. It means we have to build our routing systems. It means we have to build optical transport, everything in a very different way. And it has to be dynamic and it has to be changeable. And all of that we're doing between our systems, our platforms, and our automation. And not to forget our operating system level in which we're creating things like optimizing traffic segment routing where we give the developer control of the entire network path. And the only thing that I can't forget in looking at this is trusted security. And the reason that this is kind of the, the last slide after that circle is everything that we're doing is much deeper than just offering a security product. You can read about our security product. You can talk about Talos, sample, uh, Talos sampling the global internet and finding 20 billion threats a day. And it's, a, it's massive and it's exciting what we're doing there. But it's not just about sampling the internet. That's how broad we go. It also goes all the way down into the operating system on every single box. What we're doing on a hardware level, what we're doing on an operating system level, what we're doing on a microservices level, what we're doing for fault tolerance. That depth of security goes deep, it goes high, and it goes broad into every system that we build. So we talk about carrier class, we talk about critical infrastructure, we talk about service provider. Security is a critical piece of every bit of that. So let me just show you a little bit of a um, video that kind of puts together the way that we look at all of this. have a huge customer base consuming data at an extreme rate. Streaming video, on demand, every device, virtual reality, augmented reality, internet of things, every place that has a thing. Data analytics flooding the network. New apps coming from everywhere. Viral, unpredictable, consuming your infrastructure resources like a black hole devours galaxies. Digital media distributed around the world to a zillion devices and formats. And not just for news and entertainment, but for critical moments in our lives. Remember this guy? He said, change is the only constant in the universe. He didn't mention how fast it would come. Broadband usage is increasing 50% year after year. Over half the world will soon be connected to the internet. 
That's not growth. That's an explosion. And 82% of it will be video. Great, because you're not busy enough, right? In the crucible of this massive change, your customers are dependent on you to deliver more speed, more efficiency, more reliability from a network that's safe and highly secure. Because let's face it, a network without security is, well, ouch. How do you stay ahead of change that hits you faster than a roundhouse from one of these guys? You respond like a ninja, like a team of ninjas, and move faster than change by predicting it. What if your network was smart enough to anticipate the data, adjust itself instantly, and redirect when things get in the way, or heal itself when something goes wrong? Exabytes, zettabytes, no problem. 10 gigs to the home, piece of cake. Bottlenecks, things of the past. And network engineers become conductors of an orchestrated, virtualized, highly secure platform of networks built on the strong foundation of Cisco cloud-based infrastructure and services with analytics, training, and support that makes adaptability like a rapid deployment. So instead of taking months to create new services for customers, you can do it in minutes. I said minutes. Enabling profit creation, not cost inflation. Cisco helps you get more out of your current network while adapting to the virtual network that's built for the cloud-delivered app world we live in today. So you can really deliver the goods. There's never been a better time to transform. Cisco, your foundation for transformation. So there's some really neat things in that video, and we're really doing it. If you have a chance to come to some of our sessions and learn more detail, we are orchestrating networks. We're not configuring them by hand anymore. We are automating, optimizing traffic through our crosswork platform. We have some of the most innovative leading products for, for routing, optical, mobility, DOCSIS, et cetera. So please do come to the sessions. And I'll ask you to please visit us in the service provider zone and, uh, and see some of our demonstrations. With that, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Guys, another round of applause for Yvette Knuff. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Annie Murphy. We just heard the Service Provider Innovation Showcase with Yvette Knuff, our Senior VP of Service Provider Networking. I'm super excited to hear about all the things that we're doing, especially because we recognize that there are challenges shared between public sector and service providers as they are dealing with this explosion of connected devices. Cisco anticipates over 27 billion devices connected by the year 2021. And Yvette outlined Cisco's unique approach to be able to address all of those enterprise challenges. In fact, she described how we can get to a intelligent, mass scale networking and secured critical infrastructure. We've got lots going on today. That was just the first innovation showcase for those of you on the West Coast that are just getting up and tuning in, hi. We're actually a little bit past lunchtime here. We're live on the show floor. Behind me you can see everybody rushing to their sessions after they eat lunch. We have folks that are on the show floor. We're waiting for Yvette Knuth so we can get a few words with her live with Reggie when we get in the camera. But first, let's talk a little bit about some of the other upcoming uh, innovation showcases that are coming up. We have Redefine Your Data Center Security with Jeff Reed. We don't just do security on the campus, we do data center security as well. And data center security does not mean just placing a bunch of firewalls around your data center. What else does that mean? We're going to talk about that in the data center security. Uh, data Center Security Innovation Showcase. We also are going to talk about Collaboration Reimagine with Jonathan Rosenberg. So much to be looking forward to. And now, we're going to go to Reggie. Hey Reggie, how's it going down there? Uh, it's going amazing. I'm actually over here at the Innovation Showcase. I'm with the wonderful Yvette Knuff. Yes. Oh, I got it right. I was Good practicing job. over there in the corner. <laughs> and she was talking about how, look, everything's changing in the market today. You know, there's over 20 billion people who have connected devices. It's going faster. Everyone wants 10G. And she spoke about how we can change the way that we go through technology with our customers and our new SP customers, enterprise customers. So what would you say to enterprise customers about how we're changing SP? You know, it's interesting because SP 
products used to be about really large refrigerator sized products that run the entire city of Los Angeles. And now what you've we've found with all of the architectural changes and what's happening, traffic flows are changing, clouds are moving to, to become deeper in the network. And we see that enterprise customers are shifting with their traffic growth and their needs to be able to use service what used to be prior service provider uh, products. So, uh, so we talked a lot about some of the high performance 2RU, 1RU units and how it is that enterprises can go beyond used to what used to, where their, uh, where their networks used to end as an ASR 1K yeah. and keep building beyond that with service provider products. So it's really, it's really exciting. I think one thing that you said that really caught my attention was how we have to do more with less. You yeah. know, we can't just keep adding more stuff to the, to the network. We have to use more with what we have. So what kind of innovation really makes you happy or gets you excited about the future of SP? You know, what I talked about was our growth of our data at 50% a year, right? So that means we don't have enough space to grow at 50% a year. We're not going to grow our power at 50% a year. You're not going to pay 50% per, per no. more every year for your mobile service. <laughs> no. So there's this big uh, need for Cisco to constantly innovate in density and power in, in, in all areas of performance. And so we talked a lot about how it is that we've been in innovating on custom silicon, on merchandise, silicon and on new platforms and so that's one area but also doing more with less is about automation and how it is that we have to simplify the operations. You're also not going to grow your staff by 50% to just do everything manually. So network orchestration and being able to run your network like, like you orchestrate, you know, like an, like an orchestra director where you're building a model of a network and, and, and repeating things and configurations as opposed to doing it manually. Really exciting time on, along those lines. So I know uh, you, you had a full house. Everyone was here to see you. There were people standing on the side. What will you say to your SP customers here, and even to the ones watching from Cisco Live, about what we're doing at SP, what they should be excited about? Okay, you talked about 10G. That's worth everybody standing there for, because we're on 5G, <laughs> so I'm going to interview you, and you can tell me about 10G. But anyway, we um, so, so I think one of the things is we're leading in this 5G uh, transformation, and, and where it is, and I, I talked a lot about 5G being uh, almost an excuse, right? We talk about you know moving from 4G to 5G, but it's about the architectural transformation. It's about how it is that we're moving to mobile edge compute and deeper in the network. Disaggregation, virtualization, so much happening here, so many demonstrations at Cisco Live, so I hope everybody gets a chance to check them out because there's, it is a, a huge amount of network flexibility that, uh, that we're focused on. So I have to ask you okay. because I'm a Cisco Live, this is my first year. Okay. What do you think attendees are excited about to see? I hope that they're excited to see about the networks that uh, that are more intuitive, that have the ability to run themselves as about as, as opposed to and optimize themselves. So much technology across the board on how it is that we're using the power of data. Um, very exciting. Ah, amazing. Like, and you know what? To hear everything that you're doing with SP and see how Cisco is changing the way that we're doing everything in SP, it's, it's amazing. For me, I can't wait for 10G because I'm tired of, you know, YouTube buff. Like, come on now. I Let's need to be able to stream my 4K. So, <laughs> it was amazing, guys. You guys got looking, go into the SP booth, check out online, hashtag CLUS. Back to you, Annie. Thanks, Reggie, and thank you, Yvette Knipp, for talking to us about service provider and Cisco's unique approach to delivering to those service provider customers to help them catch up with their customers. What we're hearing today is all of the things that Cisco's using to help all of us get further where we need to be. Um, one of the service providers that we got to catch up with earlier today was CenturyLink, and Stephanie had a chance to really go inside to see what they're doing today. Take a look. Hey guys, we are here with Terrence Gleason. He is the Vice President of CenturyLink Strategic Partner Alliances. Um, CenturyLink, for those who don't know, is a global network and service provider. Um, Terrence, this is your seventh or eighth Cisco Live you it mentioned. Um, how does it feel being back here? It's great to be here. So happy to be back at Cisco Live. It's always really cool to see all the new things that Cisco's bringing to market, and then also to see our expanded presence. And this is, you know, maybe my seventh or eighth time, but this is, I think, CenturyLink seventh time being the underlying network service provider to Cisco Live, and so we're, we're happy to be here. That's amazing. Yeah. So Cisco and CenturyLink, that partnership goes 
on or has been going on for more than 20 years more now. More than 20 years. Can you speak yeah. to that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, Cisco and CenturyLink, do, we do go back more than 20 years, uh, uh, largely on the hardware side, but because we're a network provider and, and we've run our own data centers for so many years, there's so many components that we need to deliver to our clients that we do with, with, uh, with Cisco. And you, you may not know this, but we are actually Cisco's first gold partner. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So this is a really strong relationship, I, I gather. It's fantastic and growing. So this partnership, how is it actually helping businesses transform their IT environment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've worked really closely, more so now than in the past, the last couple of years. I think we've really tightened up our relationship with Cisco. Um, you know, we, we, what we did is we said, let's not take it as a vendor relationship, let's really make it more of an alliance type partnership. And there's so many underlying solutions that Cisco Cisco helps support that CenturyLink delivers to our clients. And so what we've done is our product teams work real closely together now, our, our engineering teams, our solution architects, even all the way up to the executive level. We, we get together on a regular basis and make sure that we're, we're attacking the market together and delivering the solutions that our customers need. Right, um, we were talking previously and you mentioned the CEOs are meeting quarterly. Yep, yep, uh, uh, Chuck Robbins and our new CEO, Jeff Story, are now meeting quarterly. Uh, and then as well as our, our, our teams below that, from the executive sales leaders down through the alliance leaders and the, and the product and stuff, we make sure that they meet on a regular basis so we stay in tune with each other, but more importantly, stay in tune with our customer base. Awesome. Yeah. So there are combined managed services. There's collaboration WebEx, Cisco Meraki. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Yeah, we've got a lot of great solutions that we've been working at uh, developing together. So from a collaboration standpoint, we're the one of two service providers globally that can that can deliver a uh, collaboration suite from HCS all the way to WebEx, be it uh, via the cloud or via on-prem solutions to our clients. So that's been growing. It's one of our, our biggest areas. On the Cisco Meraki side, it's a great story. We are now the first and only service for provider to be able to deliver, um, I'm sorry, the first and only service provider to uh, be certified in all aspects of Meraki. So we just got that certification just recently, so we're really, really proud of that. But we've got base level uh, Meraki solutions that deliver SD-WAN, all the way to complete in-depth uh, Meraki solutions that we work with other partners to deliver uh, location-based analytics and be able to give our customers real-time stats on their customer base inside their, in, in, inside their um, uh, uh, their stores or hotels or, or, or what have you. So it's really, really strong. And then the, the, the third aspect that we've really worked on is we worked with Cisco for, gosh, for a couple of years to develop a SAP HANA um, stack that we deliver on FlexPod. And we worked with Cisco and a few other partners to be able to develop this. And we can now deliver that um, SAP HANA on FlexPod in a matter of weeks, which these deployments in the past could take months even up to a year to do. So right. those SAP solutions can be really, really complex and we've got a big SAP client base and so we're really happy to be able to deliver that to our customers with Cisco. Great. Yeah. So Terrence, this is a relationship that we've mentioned has been mm -hmm. going on for more than 20 years. How have you seen this partnership grow and how has it helped CenturyLink advance in the market? Yeah, so what we've done is we've worked with, we, we, we take a programmatic approach to how we work with Cisco. We, you know, we each have our own goals, but we come together and we agree upon, hey, what do we want to do to, to achieve together? Mm -hmm. What are those goals going to be? And then we set up that strategy, we make sure the product teams are aligned, we put marketing resources in place with each other, we both, we both invest in the, in, the, in the business together. Um, and then as mentioned before, we make sure that our, our field sellers are aligned, their, their leadership, all the way up to our executive levels, as mentioned before. And, and it's really been fantastic. Also, we've got quite a bit of engagement on a vertical basis, from our federal teams to our government teams, even our financial services teams. So uh, working together and, and really making sure that we can uh, adapt to our customers' needs quickly. Sounds like there's a lot of, you know, as you mentioned, working together and also combined managed services. Let's talk about what also, what else makes this partnership so special between Cisco and CenturyLink? You know, we can deliver 
almost everything in the Cisco portfolio. I won't say everything, that's a broad statement. But it really goes back to that long relationship that, we, that we've had. Um, you know, to date, we've, as mentioned, probably close to 25 years we've been working with Cisco and selling into our, our joint customer base. And so we do a lot of CPE solutions and we're able to deliver those CPE solutions as a service or however the customer wants them. Um, and then of course, as mentioned, we package these fantastic managed service solutions that the market is demanding for. So, you know, it's really our, our flexibility and our breadth of the portfolio that we have with Cisco that makes this relationship really special. Wonderful. Terrence, really, really quickly, what are you looking forward to this week at Cisco Live? <laughs> I'm <laughs> looking forward to quite a bit. Uh, meeting customers, yeah. expanding the relationship with Cisco, right? And then looking for new opportunities that CenturyLink and Cisco can, can uh, you know, uh, create new market channels and, and more business together. Sounds really good. Well, Terrence, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to us and hopefully see you on the floor sometime this week. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That was great to hear Stephanie speak with CenturyLink with Terrence. That was a great interview. Let's also talk to another partner, also a carrier, also a service provider. We've got Mandy, who's on the show floor in the service provider booth. Who do you got there with you, Mandy? Yes, I've got Doug Jones with AT&T. And Doug, what do you do for AT&T? I'm responsible for many of AT&T's voice and collaboration services. Okay, excellent. Describe how AT&T and Cisco are working together to enable business outcomes for enterprise customers. Sure, AT&T and Cisco have been working for quite a while to deliver collaboration, networking, and managed secure services for our joint customers. Whether those customers be very small customers, very large customers, or in various industries, AT&T is working with Cisco to make sure that our services are more reliable, better performing, more secure, lower cost, and ultimately improving the productivity of our customers. Wow, well that's impressive. <laughs> What's the breadth of AT&T offers that are Cisco powered? Uh, the breadth of the services that are Cisco powered are um, AT&T's collaboration, networking and managed secure services that are delivered by and through and powered by Cisco network infrastructure. Um, network is a great enabler. Um, any good collaboration or managed secure service starts out with a good network. Uh, many customers realize that network is the key to any business critical, mission critical, important, secure, working, reliable solution. Um, and having the right network powered by Cisco is very important. Um, Cisco's networks are very open and flexible, as we can see here from the floor with all of the various partners and solutions and networking components, et cetera, that Cisco enables as part of the solutions, which further AT&T enables for our customers. Some of the other things AT&T offers to our customers are help customers take the complexity out of collaboration and managed secure services. Uh, we do that by bringing our expertise and our background and our experience in deploying these types of solutions for our customers and being able to make help customers, whether they're deploying um, point solutions, whether they're deploying or enhancing legacy services, or whether they're de deploying uh, multi-system, complex, global uh, collaboration solutions, AT&T has offered to help customers reduce the complexity. AT&T's been doing this for many years. Uh, we have a large experience and background of being able to deploy large, complex solutions. Um, as well as having many accreditations. Um, AT&T is a Cisco uh, Gold and Master certifications, as well as receiving one of our recent um, service provider accreditations and being able to support the latest Spark Now WebEx set of solutions. Wow, I mean, it really seems like it really takes the complexity out of it. Um, so we're learning what the partnership is between AT&T and Cisco this year. Next year, what do you see happening that, that'll be new with the partnership? I think the new area is associated with the digital transformation that's happening now. We see exciting advancements in the area of artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language recognition, um, AI, chatbots, there are all the kinds of things that are happening now. Um, customers are looking for new and improved solutions, solutions that help them become more productive and more competitive. And AT&T working with Cisco are working to provide things such as new virtual personal assistants that will be able to provide true additional value to collaboration spaces, as well as chatbots that will enable um, and improve customer experience, um, much better user experience than ever available before. 
maybe I'm the only one, but what is Chatbox? <laughs> uh, Chatbots will be that new network-based software capability uh, that will add productivity, where before um, we just sent text messages back and forth to each other. With Chatbots, you'll now be able to talk to a, uh, a network-based asset, which will be able to automatically respond using artificial intelligence and be able to add value to your interaction, whatever that might be. I hear a lot about this artificial, artificial intelligence. There's a lot going on there. Is there anything else that AT&T is going to have to do with artificial intelligence? Well, AT&T is going to take that artificial intelligence and build it into our solutions. So we won't be just deploying artificial intelligence for the sake of deploying artificial intelligence. They'll be taking artificial intelligence and improving the productivity and the customer experience for our end users. For example, would be in the area of support, where today if you have a problem with a meeting or something, you would typically pick up the phone and call someone or go online and submit a trouble ticket. Uh, with the ability of chatbots, you have the ability to interact with a chatbot for support, saying, am I having a problem or something? And then the chatbot can automatically go out and check the systems and check your, your devices, determine if there are any problems, and be able to automatically and much more quickly than ever before come back and help you out with whatever your problem might be. Wow, that sounds really helpful. Now, I don't know if you're at the AT&T booth a lot, Doug, but if you're not, you are, so we can go over there and ask you more questions. Glad to stop by and uh, talk to anybody who has any more questions. Sounds excellent. And if you're not at the booth and you're roaming around, what are you excited to see here at Cisco Live? Um, just the wide variety of uh, services and capabilities and companies that are here. Uh, I've never seen such a, a vast variety of partners uh, coming together for, uh, uh, for these set of capabilities. There are tons of partners, tons of partners. Have you, are you into the games as well, or are you more here to just get the information? Of course, just to get the information, but <laughs> there are quite a few interesting games around here I'll have to try out. Thank you so much, Doug. We really appreciate it. Let's go back to Annie. Hey, Mandy. I would got to say that the energy down there at the floor at the World of Solutions looks great. You were at the opening keynote earlier this morning. This is your first Cisco Live. What are you most excited about seeing? What am I most yeah, excited about? Yeah, what are you most excited oh about? Oh, my gosh. Out there? Well, I said in my video, the game zone, but now that I'm talking with people and interviewing people, I want to head around this was. I want to see more of the partners like AT&T and other partners and learn um, what their partnership is what with Cisco. Learn more. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm learning every second today and it's fantastic. At the customer appreciation party later this week, there is going to be a Bon Jovi cover band. What is your all-time favorite Bon Jovi song? My all-time favorite Bon Jovi song? Wanted Dead or Alive. Of course. Oh my God. I happen to do that for karaoke too. I got to catch that. Yeah. You gotta show me some time for sure. Well, I, thanks, Mandy. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank sure. you, Mandy. And thank you, Bill Gartner. Or right, thank you, Doug Jones. I'm sorry. Um, we're going to go to a video with Bill Gartner, who is our VP of the Optical Networking Business Unit. We heard Yvette Knuff earlier during the Service Provider Innovation Showcase talk about how there's just terabytes of data that are going out there. At the same time, we have customers that are doing it themselves to be able to bring that long haul optical capability back uh, on their own. Let's take a look at a, a deeper look at how we can do that today with Cisco. Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with Bill Gartner. He's the VP and General Manager of Optical Systems and Optics Group at Cisco. So Bill, tell us, for those who don't know, what are optical systems? So, very simply, once traffic gets beyond a certain capacity, typically around 10 gig, we can't send the signal cost effectively over copper. We have to send it over fiber. And that might be a signal that goes around a campus, or it might be a signal that goes from New York to LA, mm -hmm. or from North America to Europe. Once it goes over a very long distance and a high capacity, we have to send it over fiber, and optical systems are the things that allow us to do that. So they're sending large amounts of traffic. Tremendous capacity, like 10, anything over 10 gig is really traveling over fiber, and today we put 
terabits of capacity on a single fiber. Wow, okay. So what kind of platforms, optical platforms, are being used and where are they being used? So actually, we have about 2,000 customers that deploy our optical platforms, and that includes service providers who are deploying them for large-scale networks like a North American network or a European or Asian network, but also large enterprises mm -hmm. and state and local governments that might be deploying networks for their own private use. So it finds its home in central offices for service providers, campus, and data centers. So these large enterprises that you mentioned, federal government, are they doing these optical networks for themselves? How are they doing like a DIY optical network? Yeah, so typically large enterprises and federal, state governments might need to, first of all, manage their bandwidth. And secondly, they want to have control over how that bandwidth is managed. And so they would decide to deploy their, the network on their own, maybe leveraging a service provider to manage that network, but they would own, and in some cases, operate that network themselves. Uh, when would large enterprises think about doing something like this? So I think there's a number of things that could cause them to think about that. One would be if they want to have control, they want to be able to manage the capacity, make changes in the network very frequently, and have that under their control, that would be a significant driver. A second driver is economic. If their bandwidth starts to grow, typically around 50 gigabits total bandwidth on a fiber, it may make sense for them to manage that themselves in order to get control of the costs. And it's not only the equipment costs, but it's the operations cost. And so they can get better total cost of ownership in many cases if they manage that themselves. This sounds really difficult to me, <laughs> Bill. And I imagine there are a lot of challenges facing optical networks. Can you explain some of those? So there's a lot of underlying physics that, that is at work here because we're transmitting light effectively over an optical network. But this is really where Cisco can help simplify that for customers. Our customers don't have to understand physics. They don't have to understand properties of light. They just have to know that they can get a signal reliably from point A to point B. And point A and point B might be 10 kilometers apart. It might be 600 kilometers apart. It might be many thousands of kilometers apart. And our job is to simplify that for them and tell them that we can guarantee that the signal is going to get from point A to point B in a very reliable fashion and a very robust fashion. Well, Bill, fascinating conversation about optical networks. I sure learned a lot today. Thank you so much for speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Well, we just heard from all of our service provider partners and customers. We've got tons of you walking around today, but now we're going to make a shift. We're going to go into the one place that both service provider and enterprise customers share, data center. Our next innovation showcase speaker is Tom Edsel. He's our CTO of our titration and app dynamics business units. People have heard a lot about what we can do in the data center, probably around what we're doing in the hardware space with our data center switching and what we're doing with automation and control there. But it goes further than that. We do things to give you insights into the application workloads themselves. How do we work in a zero trust model within the data center? We can do this with Tetration. We can enforce that policy even if it's on-prem, in the cloud. We can give you insights to make sure that your applications are performing to their optimal performance value, we can do that with App Dynamics in real time. Both offer analytics for different things. We can do things to operate them together. We don't have to do them all the time. We can do them in the cloud. We can do them on-prem. We also are going to talk about later today, as I mentioned, we have the IoT Innovation Showcase with Liz Santoni. We also have the Collaboration Showcase that's coming up with Jonathan Siegel. And for those of you who are not here at Cisco Live, you can always watch us here at CiscoLive.com. You can watch us on YouTube. You can also watch us on Cisco.com. For those of you who are at Cisco Live, share it on social media. Let everyone else know what they're missing out on. Hashtag CLUS so that we can see what's going on. Uh, we have about two minutes until Tom Edsel takes the stage. Um, we are going to take a look at some of the other things that are going on 
on here as well. We have a number of other activities. We have the social impact zone. We also have all of these other activities that have to do with games in the area. We also have our large campus network operations center. If you look all the way to the far end of the world of solutions, the reason why I say it's on the far end is because the world of solutions has over 300 exhibitors that are here today. In fact, the Orange County Convention Center is about 20,000 acres of carpeted space. You can walk from one end to the other and never break out of the air conditioning area, which is great here in sunny Florida. It's about a 3.1 mile walk from end to end. We are running a little contest between myself and the other hosts to see who can have the most steps by the end of this week. Uh, at the conclusion of yesterday, I think I was at about 13,000 steps and counting. I have to take a look to see where I am today. If you're on the Cisco Wireless here today, you can join in on the fun. If you go to your Cisco Events mobile application, click on Cisco Live, you can go click on your own profile. You can find your friends, but if you scroll all the way to down in the activities, you can track your steps. Again, remember, follow us on social media, hashtag CLUS or at Cisco Live on Instagram. Thanks very much. Well, also, if you have a chance, take a look in the DevNet zone. And we also have a little game called hashtag where is Rob? We have the Rob Boyd big head that's floating around. If you happen to see it, take a picture of yourself with him. Hashtag where is Rob? Hashtag CLUS. And if you are here and you're a Cisco employee, use hashtag we are Cisco and show us what you're doing. Show us all the activities that you're involved in today. Take some selfies with your customers. I know that I have a few customers that are here today. It's been great seeing everybody, connecting with everybody. I love to see all of you on Wednesday night at the customer appreciation event. All right, here we go into the Tom Edsel Innovation Showcase. And protection. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Tom Edsel. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to talk to you about titration, workload insights, and protection. So, how many of you?